This is the first of the arithmetic review lessons, and this one's on absolute value. So when we make or we introduce negative numbers into our number system, our numbers become like these things called vectors in science. They are quantities that have both a direction and a magnitude. The direction is what side of the zero the number is placed on in a number line, and the magnitude is its size or its distance away from zero. And that happens to be the definition of absolute value. So the absolute value of a number is its distance from zero on a number line. And uh, we use absolute value quite a bit in algebra because there are times when we don't care about what direction a number is or what side of the zero the number is. Uh, on, we care about how big the number is. And the symbol we use in mathematics for absolute value of x, um, or any number, are these straight vertical bars. Now I have a tendency to exaggerate the bars in notes to make sure that you don't mistake it for one. So what this stands for, it's not 1x1, one it's or 1 times 1, it is the absolute value of x. First off, because we don't use x for multiplication in algebra. All right, so um, if I see this, I'm asking you to find the absolute value of 2 thirds, which is how far 2 thirds is away from 0 on a number line, or just plain old 2 thirds. Okay? Um, if I put uh, some negative number in there, I'm asking for you to find the distance that negative 4.7 is away from 0, and it's 4.7 units. Now, a lot of people think that absolute value means to make it positive, and what it really means is just take the sign away, because distance doesn't have a sign. Um, now, there's a weird little way that I use uh, to remember this, and I think of the absolute value bars as little shower stalls, and the sign of the number, either positive or negative, is um, like a little, little bit of dirt. So when the number goes into the shower stall, it gets washed clean, and it just becomes plain old the number without the sign. Now you have to be careful because part of the uh, thing about algebra is that you have to read your questions very carefully and you have to see where the sign is. So what I could do is see if you're actually paying attention by putting a negative sign outside of the absolute value. So what I'm asking for here is I am asking for the opposite of the absolute value of negative 7.2. So I kind of follow the order of operations here, and I take care of this absolute value, um, which is positive 7.2. But there's a negative sign on the outside, which means the actual quantity I need is negative 7.2. So it's kind of like those outdoor showers they have at beaches. So the little number you know, goes into the shower stalls, but oh no, there's a puddle of mud outside. So when you walk outside of the shower, oh no, you get muddy and dirty again. So you're back at negative 7.2. Now the one thing we have to remember is that these absolute values work like grouping symbols. And so when I uh, encounter them in a bigger er, a problem like this, 8 minus 2 absolute value, 4 minus 7 plus 2, um, I have to treat these absolute values like they were grouping symbols. So I have to take care of them first. So 4 minus 7 is negative 3, the absolute value and then a 2 minus 8 plus 2, just recopying the rest of the problem. And I have to remember that if I see a grouping symbol and a number on the outside, there is an implied multiplication in between the number and the grouping symbol. Now, I'm not done yet, though. I still have to take the absolute value of negative 3, um, which is just 3. So I have 8 minus 2 times 3 plus 2. Follow the order of operations. Uh, 2 times 3 is 6. So then I have 8 minus 6 plus 2. Follow the order of operations. 8 minus 6 is 2 plus 2 gives me 4. Box it off. Happy face.